Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. On today's episode, we're setting up the Unbound DNS server on Debian Linux. I do hope you enjoy this one, and let's get into it. Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. On today's episode, we're setting up the Unbound DNS server on Debian Linux. So the only things I've done to this server so far are I've set a static IP, a gateway, and DNS servers. So we're going to verify all that just by doing a ping real quick. All right, we have internet connectivity. So at a minimum, uh, do that first before following this. Now, um, become root either with su or you can set up sudo. Um, all right, what you want to do first is let's verify to make sure it's not installed yet. So we're going to use dpackage hyphen l and grep for unbound. All right, it's not installed yet. Do make sure there's no other packages for DNS installed. So we want to make sure with netstat, A-N-P-U-T, um, to make sure there isn't anything listening that will interfere with this. So to install it, we want to do an app get update. Now you always want to make sure your repositories are up to date because I don't know, you could be on a different version or an older server. And that's what we're going through this step so we know we're all on the same page. Okay, after that's done, we're going to do an apt git install unbound. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and I will see you in one second. Okay, we're back. So um, let's go ahead and uh, go to Etsy unbound. Now this is your base config and right now there is other configurations we can do. All we want to worry about is a very basic one. So you can either copy the unbound.conf out of the user share examples, user share doc unbound examples, but what we're actually going to do is a little bit different. We're just going to delete the existing configuration and we're going to make a new one. So unbound.conf. The first thing you want is server colon and enter down and tab in. So the server is, th this is the stuff of what interfaces it will listen on, who can access the server, things like that. So the first thing we want here is interface colon space. And then if we put a specific IP in here, it will only bind to that interface. It'll only listen on the interface we specify. If you have multiple interfaces in your server, though, you can specify all zeros. And that's what we're going to do here. We're going to specify 0.0.0.0. And uh, that is all interfaces. Now, under that, um, like I just said, we can control who can access it. Now here, um, as what you'll want to do is get with your network admin or if it's a small network, you'll know the subnets and everything in use. Um, make sure you know what networks need to access the server. Okay, I already know that. So we're going to make sure, whoops, got Cisco on the brain, I apologize. Um, access, access uh, well, you know what? This is what you do when you don't remember. Unbound.conf. Nobody's perfect, so we're going to go to access real quick. Access control. I apologize. It happens. But now you know if you forget to. All right, access control. Space. And then our network is 192.168.00.24. And what we want to do is allow that network. We also want to allow the loop back address for IPv4 and the loop back address for IPv6. But in this case, the last thing we want to do is uh, deny. all other IPv4 networks. 
and any other IPv6 networks, okay? Now, I did uh, forget here. Uh, do make sure to add the... Uh, every argument needs a statement of a colon after it, so make sure to add those, okay? All right, that's how it should look. And uh, after this point, that's the main thing you need for the server itself. It'll listen on port 53, and it will only allow those networks. Okay, the next thing we want is forward-zone colon. These are called clauses, by the way. And um, what it expects is a clause and then related configuration. Okay, um, forward zone, and then what we're going to do first is name colon, then in quotes, dot, okay, and that means all uh, domain names, so any domain, basically, we're not being specific. Under that, we're going to put forward dash adder, colon, for, in my case, at least, 4222, and 4221, all right, and also, we're going to put forward first to yes. And uh, we'll see in a second why that's important. But basically, it tries to forward the query to the DNS servers here before it tries to look in this file for the domain name. Because you can set overrides in the file. And we'll do that in a second, but not right yet. Okay. <clears throat> so make sure before we save this, that we have all of our colons. We do. We have our colons on the server clause and the forward zone. Everything looks right. And okay, we're going to go ahead and save this. And you don't need to even use the text editor I'm using. You can use nano, whatever you want. But after you save it, use unbound-check comp. Okay, that's odd. Hmm. All right, apologies. What happened is that just because I'm root, you guys bust for the whole path. So with that command, though, that checks the file. So there's no errors in the file. So what we want to do now is use system CTL. First off, we want to enable unbound because we want it to start on boot. And um, after that is enabled, then we'll uh, start the uh, daemon. So system CTL start unbound. And if you prefer, if it was already running, you can do restart unbound. Any second now, okay. And uh, we'll make sure it's running oh, real quick. All right. So what I want to do now is go back to the netstat command we did. It is listening on port 53. That's good. And uh, we want to get the interface names real quick. And again, the path problem. But um, uh, let's see. Okay, EMP0S3. And we want to go ahead, and I doubt we're going to find TCP dump in the path either. You probably won't run into this if you use sudo. Um, but... Anyway, ignore that. Just use sudo if you if you prefer. We want to filter by UDP port 53. And now that we've done all that, I can go down and show you that the server's working. So we're going to do dig, and we're going to say at, then the server's IP address, 192.168.0.1. And we'll just say Google in this case. All right. And let me break that down so you understand. Uh, basically, what happened is the query came into the server from our client at 195, and it asked, it asked uh, where google.com is, what's the IP, and what the server did is went out to those forward adder uh, addresses and asked them. Of course, they get their answer from the root name servers. That's the hierarchy. But this name server here responded to ours that we just set up, and it gave it the address. So what it'll do is it'll cache that address, and after it caches that address, 
it sends that back to the client. So it caches it and sends the reply, but it's cached. So if somebody else asks the same thing, it will respond quicker. All right, the last thing I want to show you real quick, I'm going to go ahead and pause uh, the video for one second. All right, the last thing I wanted to show you is how um, we would do split DNS, or basically, in other words, how you would override asking the servers listed in forward zone, and you would check the server first. Okay. So what we would do to do this is local zone. And this just means a local uh, domain name that we want to have uh, locally in Unbound instead of asking on the internet for it. So for this, I'm just going to pretend some bad site.com. Okay. And uh, we'll end it. You have to have a dot in there. All right, and after that, that's your, your main local zone, and then you want to give it a type. Ours is static here. And then we want to say local data. And the, the local data is, is saying what this is. In this case, this is going to resolve to an internet uh, type record. So the DNS record type is internet. And it is an A record because it's IPv4. And we're actually going to give an answer up there of a loop back address. This is what uh, happens in spam prevention in uh, email, on email servers. And basically what we want to do is if they ask for that, sumbatsite.com, we say it is 127.0.0.1. And, you know, going back to some basic networking, you know that that is a loopback. They're not going to get to any website if they send to their own TCP IP stack. So the last thing we need for this entry is a pointer record. And for that, we basically just say the IP address we want to use. So it's the, the reverse, basically. The IP address and then some bad site. All right, that's what it should look like. Make sure you don't forget the dots at the end there. And after you've saved it, we do want to check our config, and we're all good. And uh, make sure to restart. Whoops, if I could spell it today. One second. I guess more than one second, huh? Okay. And we'll make sure it's listening. Okay, it is uh, up and running. We're going to do the same thing for you. Um, we're going to go ahead. And look at uh, TCP dump again. And look at UDP port 53. All right. So the first thing we'll do is do that same uh, dig for Google. All right. And uh, the next thing we'll do is dig the server here. And uh, for some bad site.com. And look at that. Now, because we put it in the server clause, it didn't even have to ask the DNS servers in the forward zone clause. It just said, hey, this A record query for some bad site.com, I know what that is. It's loopback. So I send that back to you. So um, with split DNS, where that's actually important is in. Uh, Networks where you have on-prem servers or anything like that, you want clients inside of the organization to get the private IP. So I could put a corporate domain name, etc. 
and give anybody asking on the inside of the network the actual private IP of the server so they could still use the domain name in their software even though they're inside but what would happen is the rest of the internet accessing that server gets the public IP of that network and then it still works but it's split because depending on if you were on the inside or the outside you get different answers so you don't really got to do that too much but otherwise things like this as I said for spam prevention or for um, just plain restricting access to websites okay so with all that uh, I'm Tyler with T-Tech as always uh, I do hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful and have a very nice day and thank you for, for viewing